Here's a land full of power and glory. Beauty that words cannot recall. Power. Okay, hi everybody. Um, we're going to move on now to discussion of functions, which are a particular kind of relation. Uh, and they are, of course, a very, very fundamental part of mathematics. I mean, it's hard to do anything in mathematics without talking about functions. And our goal is to really dive in and get a rigorous abstract definition of what a function is. And it's going to be a little different than some of the more informal uh, definitions that you've seen, like a function is a rule. Um, the problem with those sorts of definitions is that they're too vague. They don't, it's hard to figure out whether they cover all of the classes of things that you want to be functions. But before we can dive into that, I wanted to clear up uh, something that we'll need from the last section, which I kind of skipped over. Uh, in the last section, we talked about relations. And you'll remember that a relation is a subset of the Cartesian product of two sets. And usually we think of a relation as a subset of a Cartesian product of a set A with itself. So here A is a set and R is a subset. And the way to read such a relation is that whatever this relation is, it could mean a lot of different things. Um, we sort of say that A is related to B means that the ordered pair AB is in the subset R inside A cross A. And we looked at a few examples of this. I mean, for instance, A less than B, if R, if ARB means A less than B, then R consists of the collection of all pairs a, b, and let's say here that a is the real numbers, for example. It's the collection of pairs a, b, where a is less than b. And the way you check to see if the relation holds, if you want to know, is 3 less than 5. Well, you look to see if 3, 5 is in the set R. And we then looked at some properties of relations, the symmetric and reflexive and equivalent properties, and focused in to some extent on these uh, special kinds of relations called equivalence relations. But um, here I wanted to talk about a slightly different situation where instead of thinking about a relation between elements in a single set, we want to think about relations between elements in two different kinds of sets. And here's a very simple example of what I mean. Uh, as we all know, integers come in two flavors. They're either odd or even. And one way to express that is to introduce a relation, which is a relation between the set of integers and the set with just two elements, 0 and 1. And we're going to say that um, an integer is even if it's related to 0, and it's odd if it's related to 1. So the subset that captures the relation is going to be constructed as follows. It's going to be a subset of the product of z and 0, 1. And we're going to define r to be the collection of points where the first coordinate is even and the second coordinate is 0. And the first coordinate is odd, and the second coordinate is 1. So if we were going to sort of plot this relation, I shouldn't use, yeah, uh, here's the integers. Uh, maybe I'll start at minus 2, I'm going to, let me clean that up a bit. So we're going to start it, we're going to make a number line. And we're going to start at, let's say, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's kind of our x-axis, the first part of the Cartesian product. Now, our y-axis has only two 
elements in it, 0 and 1. And so the points in the, so the Cartesian product would be all possible points in this grid, all possible combinations of a point from the integers and a point from 0, 1. But the subset R only consists of certain such elements. So minus 2 is even, minus 1 is odd, minus 2 is even, 1 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd, and so forth. And so you see as a subgroup, a subset of this Cartesian product, the, the sets, the, the points that belong to the relation are the points that match an integer with 0 or 1, depending on whether it's even or odd. So this is one way to draw a picture of this relation. Another way to draw a picture of the relation, which sometimes is maybe a little more illuminating, is not to use this grid format, but maybe to put the integers over here. And to put our 0, 1 over here. And then to connect the odd, even integers to 0 and the odd integers to 1. And we would get a picture like this. And how do we interpret it? Well, each edge here corresponds to an ordered pair. This corresponds to the ordered pair minus 2, 0. This one here corresponds to the ordered pair 3, 1. Because it starts from 3 and it ends at 1. And because the order matters, it might have been smart to put arrows or something on these lines. Because the lines always go from left to right, because the relation uh, isn't necessarily reflexive. And, and um, so it matters. Wit and, and, and actually, it's not reflexive because the two sets aren't even the same. So you have to say, which is the first element of the ordered pair, and which is the second element of the ordered pair. And you can do that by looking at these arrows. So those are two different ways to look at a relation between two different sets, where the relation captures some property of the elements of the set. Let's look at one other example, maybe one that is of some interest to some of the people in this class. So suppose you look at the set of people, applicants, applying for residency programs. Applicants applying for residency programs. So people who have uh, graduated from medical school and they want to go to a residency program. And then meanwhile, we have the set of residency programs. And so one type of relation between applicants and residency programs is a relation that we'll call M. And we'll say that an applicant has the relationship M with a residency program if that student has applied to a residency program. And this is one uh, situation where I think it's most natural to draw the picture this way. Here we have all the students, all the eager young medical school graduates. And here we have all the schools Brown, Penn, Harvard, Yukon, Michigan. How about some place in Florida, Miami? Lots of places where people might be interested in going. And as in the last example, we can draw a an arrow if student one has applied to Brown and Penn, we draw arrows like that. If student five has applied to Harvard and Yukon, we draw arrows like that. Maybe student four has applied to Miami, Yukon, and Michigan. 
And I don't know, student three is applied to Penn and Harvard, and student two is applied to Brown and Yukon. And this is a picture of a subset M contained in the Cartesian product S cross R. And the ordered pairs that belong to M are the pairs where you have a school and a, a, an applicant and a residency program connected by a line. So for instance, S1 Brown belongs to M. And S5 Yukon belongs to M. So M is a list of all of the combinations of a student with a program to which they've applied. Now, um, you could ask for a graph about the places where they've been accepted, and then there might be many fewer lines like this. But um, this is an example uh, of a relation. And if you think about the properties that we looked at for equivalence relations, like reflexivity or transitivity, they don't really make sense in this situation because the, the two sides of the relation are different. So um, the order of the two things really matters. So um, these can be very useful types of relations. And this idea that you can capture the elements of relation as the edges in a, in a graph, that the, the lines that join points in set A to points in set B represent the ordered pair from the beginning to the end, which belongs to the relation, is a nice way to think about relations. Uh, so this is a topic that we didn't quite cover in our discussion of relations, but it's really more re relevant for the discussion of functions, which is what we are going to start now.